Hi friends, hello, happy Friday. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. I'm Lisa Hetrick. I'm super excited for today's tutorial. It's kind of a chill tutorial and I'm going to be sharing something that is new to me from Daniel Smith. This isn't a review, this is a tutorial. We're gonna paint. If you're on my email list, I sent out um, I sent out a little list of things that you could pull together if you wanted to paint along with me. But we're just gonna have some fun today. I see friends popping in. Hello, hi Dawn, Donna, Kathy. Oh, everybody's here. Nancy, Cherie, Wilma, hello. Everybody's saying hello to everybody in the chat. Okay, friends, we're gonna get started. We're gonna get started. We're gonna jump in. I missed last week's live tutorial because we had a little bit of construction happening and it was a, a wee bit loud. Um, so we're back on it. We're back on it this week, but this week a little bit different. Doing a card tutorial, but not with my Gina K line. We're gonna paint and we're gonna have some fun. And I'm gonna talk about Daniel Smith watercolor sticks and what I've learned um, and explored with. So hello everybody, everybody's still popping in. Okay, if you have a question along the way, um, pop question or cue in the chat so that when I glance over, I can look at it and I can answer your question along the way. But we're gonna go ahead and dive in and just go ahead to the overhead cam. All the supplies that I'm using today are listed below in the description. If you're watching on Facebook, and or if you're watching on YouTube, either or, they're listed down below. So it won't take a ton of time to go through everything before we get started. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay. All right, friends, this is the card project that we're going to make today. It's just super, super simple. Um, I'm calling it like the heart collage card. And we're just going to paint these hearts with some Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. I'm going to talk about them next. And... We're gonna do a technique called salting technique. It's a watercolor texture technique. Many of us, I've shared this technique many times on this channel, but we're gonna do it today. Um, but let me just pop this over here and let's just dive in. So I wanted to share, now recently, let's see, let me, yeah, let's pop that. Recently, I have, gotten these supplies that I was super excited to share. And they are Daniel, geez, my, my, uh, my brushes just keep rolling, rolling, rolling. Uh, Daniel Smith, <laughs> Daniel Smith watercolor sticks. Okay. So Daniel Smith products come in pans and tubes. So like I brought out my Daniel Smith this is one of my favorites. Friends, if you've been watching the channel for a long time, you know that I love a lot of different color brands of watercolor, but this is my watercolor set for Daniel Smith. And you can see how beautiful and vibrant these paints are. I love these pans. I love their tubes. Daniel Smith is um, a company in California. So they're US based. Many people are, are know of them, are aware of them. They're artist grade. They have a lot of pigment, what makes them wonderful. And I know I talk about Daniel Smith, Da Vinci, talk about a lot of different brands on this channel. But what makes them wonderful, what I like about them is their high pigment load. They have a lot of pigment in their paint. So when you paint with them, you get like whoosh of color and it's pretty amazing. So. This is my pan set, and I wanted to explore. Hello, we've got more people popping in. Hello, Monica from Germany. I wanted to explore their watercolor sticks. Okay, so here are the colors that I have in their range of watercolor sticks. I think they have 90, um, 90 watercolor sticks but I don't have all 90 and you don't need all 90 and you actually don't even need these at all if you have other watercolors. I just think it's fun that we're gonna, um, one of the things that you all had asked me to share a little bit more of this year on the channel was um, different brands and what they do and just kind of get a little more exposure to different things that were out there. So I won't be doing reviews of products but I'll be sharing 
projects using different brands. So Kathy just shared that she has a sample card of Daniel Smith colors and they are vibrant. I have that same, same dot card. I love it. They are super, super vibrant. So these sticks um, are just really, really fun. Here are the, I'm going to move these colors. I did these like little tiny color swatches of the sticks. Let me just move them and kind of pop that out a little bit. So the sticks come with wrappers around them. This is um, bismuth. Oh boy. Let's just say bismuth yellow. So it's a beautiful yellow color, just absolutely beautiful. So they're super, they're like a stick. They are, they're just a stick of pigment paint, watercolor pigment paint. And um, when I looked, when I purchased these, they said that, that one of these sticks equals three pans. So that's kind of interesting. I don't know what, how many um, for their tubes, like one stick equals how much in a tube, but I think it's pretty, um, it's a pretty interesting way to have your watercolors. So I really, really like them. Now they come with a wrapper around them. I took the wrappers off and then I kept the names and just kind of put the names here. So I want to share, I purchased mine, the, this set, they came in sets of five. You can buy them individually. They came in sets of five. I purchased them from St. Louis Art Supply here in the U.S. You can find that link. I put that link down below in the description. I'm not an affiliate. I just really like that art supply shop. They're online and they also have a brick and mortar in St. Louis. I really like those people. They are just amazing. They have lots of different kinds of artist supplies that are maybe like a little harder to find or unique. So I had gotten them from there. And the reason why I got them from there is because they bundled their, they bundled their sets, these sets with these little cases. And these Daniel Smith sells these, they're called watercolor stick cases. So they're, like, they're little plastic. They have five compartments and a snap lid. Really digging it. You can also separate these. I didn't separate them. But you could. You could separate them if you wanted to store them that way. So I feel myself getting a little geeked out about this um, product. But anyway, this is where I purchased my watercolor sticks. And I kind of just did a little swatch of them to keep inside. And I've just been working with them inside their little case, which makes it kind of fun. So here's the colors. Here's some of the colors. What I want to, let's pull this out. Here are the colors that I have in this set to 20. So we got 20 colors here. Look at that range of colors from yellows to beautiful browns to our, um, our reds and pinks to the violets and the blues. I just think this is such a really pretty, pretty set. Um, St. Louis Art Supply did a really good job of bundling them. So super fun. All right. Now, if you've ever used, <laughs> Joanne says, geek out. I can, it's funny because I can feel my brain starting to be like, Lisa, you're geeking out a little bit um, in your chatter. So on this channel, we've talked about ink tense blocks and they come like in a block and you, we've used them for lots of different things. These are sticks, so similar techniques can be used, but the ink tents blocks are, remember, ink, and these are watercolor, so they will react and activate with water, and they will dry, and you can reactivate them again, where ink tents is a little bit different. So they do something different. They essentially are a, either a tube or a pan of watercolor in a stick form super simple, which makes it really, really easy. So let's play with them a little bit before we start our project. All right, I am going to move some of this out of the way. I'm kind of obsessed with these blues in the line. So I kind of wanted to show, which hopefully I won't spill them. Let's bring in a piece of card, um, Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. So I'm going to pull this what color? 
let's do phthalo blue. I think I'm going to play with the phthalo blue. One of the things I wanted to share, so you can use the stick just straight up like this if you wanted to. Just kind of color with it, draw with it. So one of the other things that you can do is you can have like a little petal, puddle of water and you can kind of like color it into that puddle of water. That's kind of fun for washes, for washes of color. Let me move this. Let me grab my big brush here and just kind of make this little puddle of color for a wash. This would be really nice if you're just trying to get a really light wash of color. So watch, I'm going to activate what we did here with the pencil. I mean, using it like a pencil. So you can see that those lines are a little bit hard to scrub away. So that's one thing. That's probably one way I wouldn't use these sticks like that at all. But here's like my favorite way of using them. Just right inside of this little case, just lifting them up and pulling that color. Look at that. Holy smokes, look at that pigment. And watch, I'm gonna go for days here with that stick. That's pretty amazing. So let's do just, I love that intensity. Now let me pop open. I love this idea of doing this for a wash. Like if I wanted to do something that was washy washy. Now I'm going to open up my Daniel Smith. I'm pretty sure I have phthalo turquoise in here. I have the same color in here. Probably. Looks like I do. Looks like it's somewhere. Okay. Looks like it's right here. Okay, so here's my pan. I'm just going to grab some of that color. So look at that intensity. I'm going to close that up. I can't hold it and do the same thing. Okay, so we've got that intensity of color there in that pan. Look at that. See, that's kind of cool. So if you already own the pans for Daniel Smith, you know, you don't need the sticks at all. If you already own the sticks, you don't need the pans. I just think it was a really unique way to kind of bundle these together. And it, super portable, just kind of fun to play with. Also, like for bigger mixed media like techniques, like if you were, also, it's pretty, look at that phthalo. Look how that stains. Let me grab one that is, isn't is super wet. Let's grab like this, this oh, Carbazole Violet. Like if you were working in your art journals and things and you wanted to cover a lot of area and just kind of use it like a pastel, you really could do that with these and then just dissolve. See how I used it on the side there? And I was able to kind of get that to dissolve better, a lot better than I did when I used it like a pencil. But look at that color. Gosh, that's super vibrant. What I love about Daniel Smith is it's whooshy. Look at when you put water in it, it gets like, it pushes the color charges back. You can do a lot of really great techniques. This is pretty dry right now, but look, I'm going to reactivate it and get it going again. And I can move it around. Ah! I just love Daniel Smith, but I love a lot of different watercolor brands. So this, this is just a really fun, we're just going to have some fun with it today. Really fun tutorial. Now let's dive in and paint some hearts. So we are, if you are following along, all you need is a piece of um, watercolor paper. I'm using Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor, okay? And I use that all the time, so everybody's pretty familiar with that. And I'm just gonna kind of stack these colors around me a little bit, and we're just gonna paint some hearts. We're gonna paint some hearts. I'm going to be using a number 10, number 10 brush. And while we paint, we're going to chat and we're going to do the salting technique. So from your kitchen, grab some Celtic sea salt or Himalayan salt or even table salt would work for this technique. But um, like a really crunchy salt will give you bigger, bigger textures. So 
I have some Celtic sea salt. You can see I reuse it. You can see some colors in there from other projects. I'm going to start in with doing a pink heart. We're going to do a range. Let's do, yeah, let's, let's start in with like a cobalt, cobalt teal blue. And I'm going to do this method. I'm just going to use my brush. My brush is wet. The paper is dry. We're going to do a mix of wet into wet and wet into dry. So my paper is dry and we're going to draw some wonky hearts. So I'm just going to come around one side and down, up the other side and over. And all of these hearts are going to be different shapes. If you're more comfortable with uh, having more uniformity or symmetrical hearts, use a pencil and just draw a heart but I encourage you just to let it be whimsical like this. So we did that outline and now I'm just coming in. The brush is wet, the paper is dry, and we're just gonna use the pigment that's here and draw that in a little bit towards the center. And then the paper's gonna be wet, everything's gonna be wet. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this cobalt teal. What I really like about this brand is look at that, I mean, look at the pigment. There's just a lot there. Between this brand and like Da Vinci and my Mary Blue, these are kind of like my favorite brands to work with because I like to have a pretty high pigment load of color in the first pass, right? So we've got a lot of color here in our first pass. Now I'm going to come in, everything is wet in that center, cleaned off my brush, I'm going to come in with this spring green, and look at how quickly that activates, that's a lot of pigment. I'm going to drop some of that in there, and look it's whooshing, it's whooshing, it's moving around, I'm going to coax it a little bit to get a little bit more of it moving around, and I'm going to add a little bit more blue. I just let it do its thing. And while it's wet, I'm going to take a little bit of salt and pop it on there. Okay. So the salt is going, is it will create like an oxidizing. It'll oxidize that um, watercolor and it'll, when it dries, it's going to give us these really beautiful textures. So let's just keep going. We're going to make uh, I think we're going to make like six hearts. So let's go ahead and do another one. This time I'm going to do a wet into wet. So I'm going to, my brush is wet, my paper is dry, and I'm going to do the same technique by drawing those hearts. But this time I'm just doing it with a wet brush. Do, 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 do. I'm just adding in some color after we get this nice and wet. Now, if you're using a different paper that isn't 100% cotton, this technique is going to work great too. It's super, super fun. Okay, so you can see, let's see if I can tilt this a little bit. You can see that it's wet. See my wet heart. Now I'm going to come in with some permanent alizarin crimson. Oh my gosh, look at all that color. And just drop that in there. Look at that. Love the Daniel Smith whoosh. This is really vibrant. If you, I'm coaxing it around a little bit. If you've used these watercolor sticks or the Daniel Smith brand at all, I'd love to know. Drop it in the chat. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you think. Daniel Smith is pretty popular. Mostly, you know, everyone is pretty aware of it. Um, if you're not and it's a new to you brand, check them out. Check them out. They've got lots of beautiful colors. I'm loving the way that looks. Now I'm going to come in with a little bit of yellow. Let's drop a little yellow in there and see what happens. And maybe a little bit of orange. Let's pop a little pearl. Oh, that was a lot. Let it do its thing. So this is wet into wet. So you see how the brush, the color is not going anywhere else other than where I've where the water is. See how it's not going outside of the borders? Watercolor wants to stay where the water is. All right, let's put some salt on that one too. 
just dropping some salt. You look at, see how it automatically just starts oxidizing? Let's kind of move some of that salt out. Love that. Love it. Okay. Making kind of a salty mess here. Let's just move that. All right, let's paint another one. Let's do a, let's do a violet. Let's come in with this quinacridone violet, which is kind of a red violet. And I'm just going over, I didn't even pre-mist these. I'm just going over the sticks, going in. Let's just draw another heart. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. It can be messy, no worries. Cleaning off my brush and coming in and just using the pigment that's there. My brush is wet, the paper's dry. And I'm moving that color towards the center. There we go. Super pretty. Loving that. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of a darker, a little bit of the Carbazole Violet, which is a little bit of, woo! Okay, that little bit became a lot and whooshed. So cleaning off my brush, just going to tap, tap, tap this out a little bit. And, and coax it around. Coax it around a little bit. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add some of the salt to that too. Kind of digging the way that looks. Okay. Now you can see that the colors, we got our colors up here are starting to dry and they're fading back because that's what watercolors do. Your first round, you can layer multiple rounds of watercolor. I'm going to come back to this one and I'm going to add just a little bit while everything's still wet. I'm just dropping in some color and letting it do its thing because I really wanted there to be another <coughs> a little bit darker. Okay, now let's go in and do a blue. Ooh, all of these blues are really intense. So we have a cerulean blue, thalo turquoise. Let's try. I'm gonna pull in. I'm gonna do this in. I don't know. Let's play. Let's do turquoise. I'm gonna do the same technique. Let's move that over a little bit. So I've been having a lot of fun playing with these, and I think <laughs> because they're new to me. And they're portable and you can kind of just move them around. Um, I just feel like it'll take me forever to use all that color. So I was kind of fascinated by the fact that it's, it's in general, three pans of watercolor. Um, okay, there we go. In one stick. It feels like it might be more. So some of the other things that I've seen people do... My brush is wet, paper's dry, I've got a little bit of that pigment. And I'm just going to coax it in. Some of the other things I've seen people do with their watercolor sticks are um, like cut them and put them inside of a pan and then create their pan set that way, which is brilliant. So if you are, you know, you can, if you want to buy watercolor sticks like in some of the sets that are already kind of made there for you like St. Louis Art Supply or Dick Blick has some sets and you want to build a Daniel Smith pan set you can do that you can literally just like take a take a craft knife and cut it and then put it inside of a pan put it inside of a pan and then build a set like this. I just think that's pretty cool too. Really, really cool. Um, oh, I just love these colors. It's been a while since I played. One, two, three, four. We've got four here. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna see what happens when I, this is probably gonna be a mistake. Let's pop a little, I'm gonna pop a little Carbazole Violet in there. Let that kind of moosey around. Add a little bit of salt. There we go. 
One, two, three, four. I got kind of a little bit of a mess here. I need to do two more. So I want to do two more, and I want them to be a little smaller. We've got some big ones here. We're just kind of having some fun. I'm going to go in with the orange, the pyro orange. This time, I'm going to paint myself a little heart right here in the center. And these are wonky and whimsical and fun. Then I'm going to take and do a little bit of wet into wet here. So this whole thing is wet. Go get some of my pyro orange. What do we got here? Some pyro orange. Drop that in. Let that kind of do its thing. I need to coax that one around a little bit. It's a little less whooshy than some of the other colors. So let's coax that, coax that around a little bit. And I'm going to drop, let's drop a little bit of a carmine in there, which is like a red pink. Let's drop a little bit of that in there. Let that do its thing. Do, 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 do. All right, let's add some salt. This is just a fun, easy technique that you can do with whatever you have on hand. You can do this technique. You don't even need this brand. Um, you can do this technique with whatever you have on hand. So let's see, I've done some purple. Let's do another blue. Let's do, let's do this. This is Wisteria. So this color in the Daniel Smith brand, Wisteria, has a little bit of white in it. So it has some, uh, it's a little bit more opaque. You can see that. It's a little bit more opaque. You can see how it's a little thicker and it's a little bit more like paint. But look at that beautiful lilac color. Love it. Love it. Okay. I'm gonna drop a smidge of blue. No, let's drop a little tiny bit of that violet in there. Let's see what we think. Love it. Maybe a little bit more. Drop a little more violet in. Okay, kind of digging the way that looks. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to this. Just kind of let it do its thing. So super, super fun. We're going to, now, you could, with this, with this salting technique, you could let this dry on its own, or you can use a heat tool, which is what I'm going to do so that I can expedite the drying time a little bit here so that we can start to cut everything out and play with, um, play with the hearts and paint on the card. Okay, so let's go ahead and dry a few things here. a little wet right here. Everything else is looking kind of dry. Okay. Let's see what we got. Let's take a peek and see what we got. Um, all right. Everything is dry. So now what I'm going to do is just gently see how this, this wasn't super dry. So I'm going to come back in. You can use a brush. Oh, but I'm loving the way that looks. You could use a brush to kind of brush off the, the, um, the salt. I'm just going to move it to the side here. You can also just kind of go in with your fingers, which is this is incredibly satisfying to hear that crunch. Go in with your fingers. Kind of messed that, made that a little bit messy. 
that's okay kind of love that this one is so dry I had so much color there wow that's okay Joanne has a really great question. She says, when I did this technique, I didn't drop in another color after taking the salt off. There wasn't too much of the desired effect. So next time you drop in some additional color. So yeah, you see how I dropped in a little bit of additional color there. Didn't really have to do it too much over here. But look at that, um, that kind of oxidized salt look to it. Now, I'm going to tidy up for a second because... If I don't, the salt's going to get everywhere. Let's just go ahead. I've used that salt a couple different times. So let's just go ahead and toss that. Now, you can see this is also, you know, some of the colors in watercolor are staining. So they're on my hands. So remember that could end up on your project. And that's okay. I'm going to let this be the way it is. Now, we're going to come in with some scissors, and we're going to fussy cut this, these hearts out, okay? And I'm just going to talk, I've talked about fussy cutting on the channel before. I like to fussy cut. Um, now, if you have hearts, and you have heart-shaped dies, and you have heart-shaped stamps that you want to use, you can do this technique. Just pretend like each one of these things that I painted um, could have been a stamp or could have been a heart die cut and you could do this technique with those die cuts if you're looking for more of that symmetry. Now, scissors. I'm a left-hander but I use scissors in my right hand. It was one of those things when I was um, in school in kindergarten growing up and learning that uh, teachers always kind of threw them in your other hand. If you were a left-hander, let me know. Growing up, they always, there was always that encouragement to try to use your right hand. So I'm able to do both. So, which is kind of, kind of fun, kind of interesting. Now, for fussy cutting, we're going to cut around the edge. Now, one of the things for me with fussy cutting is that I, here, this is kind of a big piece. Let's chunk that off. I tend to hold the paper and move the paper while I'm, kind of moving the scissors. So this is the technique that I have found that makes fussy cutting less miserable of an experience. Because <laughs> some people don't really like to, look at that heart, oh my god that's so pretty. Don't like to fussy cut. But a card like this and a card project that we're doing here today, this is just kind of a really fun way to do it. We, you know, we loosely painted our hearts we did that salting technique, and now we're just creating the embellishments for our card. You could use these embellishments on a card. You could use them in your art journals. If you do Bible journaling, you could do it in there. You could, Or you could just put it on another piece of watercolor paper and frame it. How fun would that be? I think it's really cool to just kind of like think of some other different ways that you can use your stamps, your paints and the things that you're making you know into other projects other than cards so I'm just gonna cut this out cut these out and while I'm cutting just a couple little updates so next week the tutorial will be back to doing a card tutorial with a technique with one of the stamp sets in my Gina K line and I'm also prepping now for the next Gina K release, which is happening on February 20th, Tuesday, February 20th. If you're on my email list, I've been sharing like what's coming down the pike over the next couple weeks and the different projects that I'm hoping to share with you on YouTube and Facebook. All right, we've got all these cut out. I'm digging that. Look at that. I think this one might be my favorite so far. Look at all that oxidized color. Love it. Love it. Salting, really super simple. So again, kind of pop in the chat if you've ever done this technique. Also, let me know if you're doing this along with me, and some of you may be kind of using this time to kind of paint this project along with me. Let me know. 
And if you want to share it, you know, and you share it in your social media, tag me or email it to me so I can see it. I can see it. Kathy, Kathy's with us. Kathy Stromberg's here. Yes. Kathy just sent me, she sent me an email yesterday with some beautiful, beautiful card projects that she had been making. She had made with my stamps and we were talking in that email. She was talking about Daniel Smith and Da Vinci watercolors and it was just so, it made my whole morning, Kathy, that you sent me those projects so I could look at them. Made my whole morning. Okay, I've got all of these beautiful hearts. Now I'm going to bring in another piece of, another piece, <laughs> I love that teal heart. I love that teal heart too, Catherine. So I have some 100% cotton cold press. This is from Arteza. These are blank watercolor cards. I've used these in my classroom for projects and I've used these on the channel before. I did put a version of these in the supply description down below because these um, are unavailable at this time. So this is an oversized card. So it basically is a piece of watercolor paper cut into, um, gosh, it's an A7 card, I think. It's just an oversized, a larger card. So it's five by 6.9. Now we're going to use this and we're gonna just collage our, um, we're gonna collage our hearts down onto the card and then we're gonna add a few details and then we're gonna be done with our project. I've got some Gina K glue. Oh, and it's working. Catherine just said, I've never done this, so I opted to watch. If I'd known how simple this was, I'd paint it a log, yes! Give it a try. You know what, the whole point of these tutorials is to kind of break things down for you. Make them, you know, easy and approachable and simple for you to give them a try. Now I'm just gonna start collaging these on in a random way. I just, <laughs> you're welcome, Kathy. <laughs> I was just so excited. I emailed you back, by the way. I don't know if you've gotten that email yet. We're just going to, I'm just going to kind of collage them across here. Pretty random. Just kind of figure out. And I only put a little bit of glue in the middle. You see, so I can bring that up a little bit. Just kind of, I'm going to play around here. I'm going to play around with my composition. I love that watercolor paper is a little stiff, so you've got some you can play with it enough to move it and give it a little bit of height. Loving that. All right, I think I might pop this little guy down here. And again, we're just playing. This could be a really super quick, easy Valentine card or this thing called Galentine's Day, which I didn't think was, I didn't know was a thing. But when you give, when you spend time with your girlfriends or your your friends and you give them a card you could give it to a friend or like I said when we were making this this would be really cool framed put it in a frame and give it to a friend and you made it and you created it which is super fun I think I'm going to bring this down here and let this overlap a little bit now I like the way this looks plain but I want to let them overlap. But we're going to add a little something extra to it. All right, let's get all that salt off. We've got some residual salt. We've got a lot of texture going here. I kind of love the way I did this and the shape of the heart. So look at our original. See how I did some hearts that were a little bit bigger in scale. So it kind of fit the space a little differently. Now, we're going to go in and I'm going to add a few little hearts here and maybe like one down here just to kind of, for the composition of our project, draw our eye this way so that we can really see, have some fun with that. <laughs> Kathy said, you're the, you are the composition master. Um, okay. So Kathy, that's funny that you say that because that's the graphic designer in me. So I've been a graphic designer for 30 years, a little bit more than that. And um, I was trained as a traditional graphic designer when we did everything by hand. So 
Um, that was the late 80s when Macintosh computers were becoming a thing. And we were just starting to use them. But when I got started, everything was done by hand, um, really before computers. So those skills kind of have just been with me all my life as far as um, being a graphic designer. And I really think it's helpful to share it with you all because sometimes when we're creating a project, a card, or we're painting something, it doesn't feel right. It feels off and you're not sure why. So learning some of these um, techniques for composition just kind of can be a light bulb moment for you. It becomes more intuitive the more you practice and then your projects feel a little bit more pleasing to you. And when they do, then you're having more fun and you're crafting your joy. So it's super fun. Okay, all right, we're gonna paint some hearts and I'm gonna come in. I feel like I wanna do a red. So here's what I'm going to do. I've got my big number 10. Is this my number 10 brush? I'm going to paint. My brush is wet. I'm just going to paint like two little um, <laughs> I wanted to call it leafy. Two little parts of the heart. And just drop a little color in. If I need to go to a smaller brush, I can. So basically what I did is I took my brush, I laid it this way, and then I laid it that way, wet, to create that heart shape. So then I can work with the paint that's here. And just kind of elongate it, make that a little bit more of an elongated shape. How pretty is that? So we've got a mixture of textures where we're painting right on the card, and we've got these um, salted pieces that are popping up. Good morning, Dawn. Dawn just popped in. I know it's early where you are. Dawn is in the California, so it's early. Thanks for joining us. All right, I'm going to come in with, I think I'm going to pop one. Yeah, I really just kind of want to focus that composition go, going down in this direction. Let's come down. I'm going to grab some pyro orange. This time I'm going to paint that in. I've got a lot of pigment on my paint. I'm going to pop a little tiny heart down here. A little tiny heart. Just painting it with the tip of that brush. Clean off my brush. Okay. Come in. And move that pigment around a little bit. Just let that dry. We're not going to add any salt to these hearts because these are going to be more of our solid. So they provide some nice contrast up against the, um, the salted pieces. So we've got that. I feel like I want to put a little one in here and then maybe kind of one that hooks up here, but I'm not, I'm not sure yet. Let's see. Let's grab some blue. Got some of that in Danthrene blue. I think that's, now, this is Prussian blue, so it's a dark blue. I'm going to come in and do a little heart here. And I'm just using the tip of the brush, and I'm choked up on my the, on the ferrule of my brush here. Really choked up, kind of using it like a pencil or a pen. Filling in that color, cleaning off my brush. If you're not comfortable using a big brush, you can always come in and use a smaller brush. But remember, your brush has a really, most brushes, even if you're using a big one, it's a really nice tip. That's what you're looking for in a brush, something that comes to a really nice, fine point when you wet it. All right, I kind of like that. I'm going to come in with a little bit of a, a smaller brush, but it's a little dark. So I'm going to lift some of that color up and out just with a clean brush. Just lift some of that out so some of the white from the watercolor paper comes through. No worries, my all our friends in the PST zone, no worries, just showing for popping in late. We have the replay, friends. We'll always have the replay. So this little space right in here is still bothering me. So I'm gonna come in and I think I'm gonna pop a little bit of a purple one. Let's do a little I'm gonna see this purple color right here, that wisteria. I'm gonna lift some of that up off of my watercolor stick 
and I'm going to pop a little tiny heart right here. Let's see if I can make that happen. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Add a little bit of that color. Clean off my brush. Come in and just kind of coax that around a little bit. That is kind of a tiny area. I'm going to go to a smaller brush here to get that look. Okay, friends. I'm digging this. I'm digging the way this looks. I love this composition. This feels nice the way it is. Now, and I'm going to let it be, and this is what I'm going to do. So normally I would like, oh, let's throw some splatter on here. Let's add a little bit more, but you know what? We're going to let it be. Now, when you're making this project, remember you can change the scale of your hearts. Do them bigger, do them smaller. Um, if you're practicing this project and you aren't comfortable drawing out the hearts, make it with circles. And then you would have like a really fun abstract card. You can use the, the salting technique with any shape. You can use your die cuts. I had mentioned that before, like raid your die cut stash and cut out a bunch of different shapes, watercolor them, put some salt on them and create a card like this. You could mix these embellishments that you've just created, that we've just created with your stamped images. We could put, my hair is falling all over the place, sorry about that. You, we could put a stamp sentiment on here. We can add some other stamps like leafery and other things on here just to kind of add a little bit more texture to the card. Okay, so super fun. Love this salt look. Love the way this looks. Totally digging this. These watercolor, these Daniel Smith watercolor sticks have just been a joy to work with. Super fun. I'd love to know what you think about them. And if you if you have them, if you've been playing with them, I will say they're a little pricey, friends. They are an investment. That's what and when you're buying them individually, they're not they're not um, like super inexpensive. They can range anywhere from like seven to ten dollars a stick. And but think about it in this way. If you wanted to start a Daniel Smith collection and you haven't started one at all, one of those sticks equals three pans. So if you were to buy the pans, sometimes the pans alone are $10 for one. So that's just kind of one way to think about it. Um, if you really like Daniel Smith and you want to create your own palette, this is one way to do it. And that's was kind of like the whole point of sharing it today as this new to me kind of product since I've never really used them before. But I will say that some of the best buy that I have found for um, for these sticks is to get them in those collections. So uh, St. Louis Art Supply carries them in those collections that they have bundled with the um, with the case, which is kind of neat. And I know that um, Dick Blick has some of the collections too, and they have the case separate as well. <laughs> I see everybody sharing that the colors are awesome. I love them too. I mean, you can't go wrong with a lot of the watercolor brands that I share because they're really, really high, super high pigment load. Okay, friends, I had a ton of fun today um, sharing this super fun watercolor project and it was sort of like sort of like the pause and paint projects that we've done except this was just something a little different and I wanted to talk about this new to me product and talk about the salting technique and I can't wait to see what you create and how creative you get with the supplies you already have right okay I see everybody just saying hello beautiful cards and that they love the colors okay friends Thanks so much for joining me today. I'll be back next Thursday. It'll be Thursday. So I'm kind of switching between Thursdays and Fridays because of other commitments that I have going on over the next several months. Um, but I will be back next Thursday. The best way to find out all of this, all of the information of what we're, what I'm doing, when I'm going live, is to, to hop onto my email list. I send an email once a week. There's also lots of freebies and offers that I share in my email. 
Um, I also share these techniques over in my free community at craftyourjoy.com. So if you're interested in being a part of that community, I have a lot of other stuff over there that I haven't even shared out in social media. So, um, yeah, so super fun. So I'd encourage you to do that. Um, if you have any questions about today's technique tutorial, feel free to just reach out to me. I'd love to answer your questions. And I am sending you into the weekend, friends, to craft your joy. I hope you get a little bit of time to kind of play with this technique. And um, yeah, you can even just do this in your sketchbook and just have some fun. Okay, I hope you found today's Daniel Smith sharing these new to me product with you informative. It was something that all of you had asked me to do over this next year. There's something I'm gonna show you real quick. There was something else that everyone has been asking me to share and I'm gonna go over to the other table cam. This is the Gonzai Tambai set. This is one of their watercolor sets and this is their um, it's made by Kuretake. It's one of their, um, the gold, the gold set. So I am going to be sharing that as a new to me. It's not so super new to me. That particular set is that, um, in a project similar to this, like our painting project coming up soon. Okay, friends. All right. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a really fantastic weekend and I'll see you next week. Bye now.